and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a returning good brother to the temple, one half of the double-headed monster that is Two Little Mice. And and now currently kickstarting and currently ki and currently kicking Kickstarter's ass with uh with Outgunned, a game which really de a game which really demands the epic voice guy if we could ever get if we could ever get him, <laughs> <laughs> the the one and only Simone Formicola. How you doing today, man? Thank you. I'm doing fine. Thank you. Thank you for having me and having us. Again, uh, after last time was a couple of years ago, maybe last time we. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to check, but it has been a couple, it has been a couple years. Yes. Um. And so, so obvi obviously, we don't need to go through the the humble beginning thing, but I suppose the I suppose the first thing I can get into is walk me through. How Outgun came to be? Was this was this an idea that you had had for a while, or was this something that had oh, a more recent yes. origin story? Yes, we, this is uh, both both things actually. Uh, as maybe as we discussed last time, or was yeah, I, I can't remember. Uh, me and uh, Rico, mm -hmm. which is other uh, owner to the mice, together with with Daniela, which is the third head of Two Little Mice and our lead artists for each and every project. Um, we both have a cinematic uh, background. Uh, I was, when we first met, I was an actor just out of the uh, academy and Rico was a screenwriter and director and so we meet. Uh, together and we, we we built two little mice as an independent video studio. You know, mm -hmm. we were a video maker, and so. Uh, but we have a great passion for RPGs, and so this branch of two little mice, which, which eventually, with the pandemic, became the the, the main uh, activities we activity we we do uh, just take. Uh, comes to life. So we are very always very interested in bring the the, the cinema <laughs> into uh, the tabletop role playing game because it, it's what we love. Basically, what's it's what we know best, and we always want to do something like uh, something. We wanted to go at, at the very core of what is uh, cinematic, you know, and the action. We think it's the basic, the common ground uh, from which we we saw a lot of uh, what makes the, 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 the cinema magic, you mm -hmm. know. And so yes, we were working, we were thinking about it a lot, and so it, it comes to life. Uh, recently, and it's coming to life thanks to this amazing Kickstarter campaign as a way to have a, a real uh, cinematic action role-playing game. That's that's our our main goal with Outgun. Yeah. Now, I'm certainly no stranger to the to the concept of cinematic to cinematic games and the and the like, but I'd like to ask a bit of a of a philosophical question. What mm -hmm. What is what is the what is the biggest piece of advice you give to GMs in terms of making their campaigns feel cinematic? Uh, the main concern we have and we had and we are trying to convey through this game is how to handle the, the pace of a session mm -hmm. to resemble the one of a movie because a movie has, has a very um, precise pace a rhythm. If you want, because it's divided into act, etc. So, uh, what we try to do and what we try to say to uh, narrators, etc., is how to handle time during a session. Meaning, um, you do a lot of different things. There are a lot of different scenes. 
you want to to play but uh how uh, is it this scene uh important in your story it deserves a lot of time okay so dig it in use all the mechanics you have at your disposal to um prolong this this action to prolong this scene because it's it's meaningful it's important um meanwhile this is, there is some scene that just an interlude it's not important we just need to go through okay don't worry just handle it in a fewer role as possible so you can move on to what really matters mm-hmm. uh, with you and in this way you can manage uh, the time and give everyone at the table the feeling that you are into uh, a movie because even the most famous of action movies certain fights for example last minutes and minutes others last like five ten seconds because they are not important they, they don't serve the purpose of the of the goal uh, and so on so we are really focused in outgun to just share these and share all the tools and knowledge we have to help narrator achieve that both in a single session and about a campaign for the same reasons of course mm-hmm. now with that with that in mind one of the one of the bi- one of the big things one of, and one of the most um um front facing things in Outgun's character setup is of is of course the roles and the tropes. Yes. Um, and while there while there's while there's going to be oh, there's going to be plenty of them, something I'm curious about is if you is if in the full book you have plans on putting a bit of advice if somebody want if somebody wants to make a custom role or a custom trope for their particular campaign. At this moment, uh, probably not, because we have several. Not only we have um, rolling tropes in the core book, we mm-hmm. already have an expansion, a big expansion called World of, World of Killers, with more trope and role, and we are unlocking several of them or new things uh, throughout the campaign. So, being this um, the first. Um, the first step of what we hope will be uh, a long game, a game we, we plan on follow a lot in the future. Uh, we think we need first to better understand and make everybody understand what a role is and what a trope is. Uh, our game, of course, with the role in particular, is to give um, player and narrators alike um, re- a very broad role, you know, when uh, in in each of them one can uh, use them to just uh, customize into their own version of that. Mm-hmm. Because when we speak about the role, we speak to something like the charmer. Okay, it's a role, but it's very not specific uh, because you need to tell uh, us what it is, what, why. It's a charm. Its role amongst your group of heroes is okay. It's a socialite, you know. Uh, or they are socialite. They are charmer. But why? They are artists or billionaires. I don't know. Uh, what's the story? Why this role? The important things of the role is what they do in the story. So they, they they function in the group of heroes. You no, know, mm-hmm. because that this, this is one. It was one of an old. I'm concerned because most of action movie, of course, had just one main main protagonist, mm-hmm. uh, which did all the action by himself. In this case, no, you have uh, you have a role because you are specialized in some sort of things happening, and all together you may uh, challenge everything and everyone. Uh, we used a lot uh, for reference, not just. Um, classic action movies, but heist movies as well, because heist movies are very much clearer when it comes to roles. You have, you know, the, the group of people doing an heist and everybody has its purpose in the mission. And that was our, our idea when speaking about the, uh, the role. Yeah. The drop is basically what we are trying to convey to help you 
customize your uh, your hero so you have something like a free spirit or a jerk with a heart of gold or the mentor you know this kind this archetype this kind of characters you see a lot in movies um plainly they are very very easy to create if you want because a trope in particular is just a, li- a name mm-hmm. and uh, a list of uh, eight skill that you have during uh, your, your hero's creation and a very small list of uh, feats that you can choose during your character creation. So it's very, very uh, simple. If you have something very specific in mind, it, it, it won't be hard <laughs> to create one by yourself. I don't know <laughs> if it's clear. Yeah, I can, I can, I can certainly get behind that. Now, taking taking that into a, taking that into account, um, I will I will note that actually I'm gl- actually I'm glad the, of the fact that each of the roles and tropes is giving you a wide skill list because yeah. um, a lot a lot of games even games that are leaning into the action motif that you guys are. Um, have the ten- have the tendency to do a, to do a um, skill point approach, which is it certainly has its place. But when you when we look at a lot of action heroes, they don't ha- they tend to have this wide list of sk- they tend to have this very very wide list of skills that they've dabbled in in one form or another. Yes, in our case, um, our director Scott mechanics it. Um uses basically um, it's 20 skills divided into five attributes and the cool things is that when you when you need to uh, make a role for whatever reason you just use an attribute and a skill and you um, add the dice how many dice you have in the attribute and how many dice you have in the skill and toss uh, a small pool of these sixes accord- accordingly mm. but the cool thing is that you don't have too much skill, just 20 of them, but you can use each and every skill under uh, uh, whatever attributes feels right at the moment. So it gives um, a lot of depth to the type of, of role you can have during a session without giving you, you know, tons and tons of different skills. Mm-hmm. So we, we try to maintain a broader approach on the, on the skills as well. So, which with every skill you can do different things based in the based by the circumstances you are in. Yeah. Now, given given that we're em, given that we're emulating action movies. Yes. Um, there. There is the there is the unfortunate there is the unfortunate issue of um of so many action movies di- focusing on a sole pro- a sole protagonist. Um, mm-hmm. si- side note, side note. To use an example of this kind of thing, this is this is the reason why why um, for example, I was always extremely cautious about utilizing Jedi in a Star Wars campaign because of course. Um, <laughs> and e- even even guys like Ralph Coster have th- had the same mindset of that's an al- that is an alpha archetype that everybody's gonna chase. And that that can that can screw things over because not everybody's going to be able to be that, but some, but everybody's going to want to. Um, how do you how do you make sure? Th- how do you stem the tide of making sure that you don't have one person who is meant to be the protagonist character? Well, basically, when you thanks to the fact that you need to choose a role and a trope. Uh, each and every hero are basically well balanced because they will be better at different things than the other. But overall, they are um, all useful because we start from the, this point of view. Each and every character you play uh, is uh, an action hero. Okay, you are an action hero, even if your role is the brain and you play the you know the, the smart type of mastermind but you are still an action hero so when you need to fight to run to do something reckless it's always in your possibilities to do so uh, 
that that's for what concern the role. Um, and you have plenty of resources in game to balance the fact that you will probably not be <clears throat> as strong as someone else in certain abilities. You have, have adrenaline, which can give you uh, extra dices for some important roles. You have the spotlight, which is a resource that grants you an automatic action without rolling dices. So you are in control of your own hero. Uh, that means that you can always be at the center of the action. Mm -hmm. And to ensure that everybody gets the time, the screen time in this case, we can see, uh, there are um, a lot of tools that the narrator has to ensure that. For example, uh, there are two ways that the um, heroes can grow. One is uh, you know, linear, uh, in set um, moment of a campaign, you gain some, some new feats or some new skill points. Mm -hmm. etc but you always have these experience these these achievements experiences etc which are a non-linear way to grow and that we encourage the narrator to give each and every hero at least one before going on in the next arc on your campaign it means that each and every one of the heroes needs to have a meaningful scene something very big um happening to them uh, because from that they can grow in game as well. You can learn something. You can get a scar of some kind. You can uh, have uh, some new bond with someone and do some some character, etc. You can gain a reputation. You can be known uh, for something good or bad, both of course. But it's important that each and every hero in the game has its moment before the story goes on. That's our uh, yeah, I, I can certainly get I can certainly get that. Now, when it comes to the when it comes to the die system, um, I do find it I do find it interesting that we do have in in a lot of ways a simplified version of what was presented in household, but it's it is still <laughs> relying on um ro on rolling sets. Um, yes. One thing I'm one thing I'm curious about is what is um what what brought you to the, to this particular type of type of system. Ah, in the in the system that that basically you have this, this small pool of the sixes and you need to roll to to get some sets so two of two three four five of a, of a kind mm -hmm. and you can re-roll the dice that are not part of a set. We come to this on the very, very first edition of Auzo some years ago, which is just in Italian, so we never uh, saw an, an international version, unlike this new, this new edition of Auzo. Mm -hmm. um, mainly because it was very, very funny for us just to roll the dice this way. Yeah. We find that the act of rolling dice is check if you get some sort of set and ask yourself, okay, I should reroll some of the dice, but I oh no, I may lose some of the successes I already have. It's very, very funny to do. And it's very on point, especially when you talk about uh, action movies, you know, where the stakes are always high and the stakes are, are a word that keep coming back in our game. It's a very important concept uh, because you are always... Uh, gambling, you're always risking something to defeat the villain, or to accomplish your mission, or to rob the bank casino, I don't know, uh, but whatever it is what you're doing with the system, you are always risking a lot because, mm -hmm. of course, in here, because you are heavily outgunned. I mean, you are a group of heroes, but your enemies will be always uh, a lot more than you, there are more guns, etc., etc., so you have to, to risk your way against uh, all odds, basically, and that, that, that's when we just we just found that this kind of role it's it's very very funny. Yeah, that's good. and one of the things that that when I was doing the Valley of the Judged episode on the quick on the mm -hmm. Zero to Hero quick start that um I tried I tried my best to make explicitly clear is 
not even despite despite appearances, it, it you don't have a case of um, eight of the att of the attributes always always tying to that to those particular mm -hmm. skills with every role. Um, is yes. that is that something that um, was was easy for people to catch on in playtesting, or or did it take a bit of coaching? No, I, I think it was pretty easy because when you clear what attributes are and when you need them, it becomes pretty clear. Uh, I, I, for example, you have one of your skill is shoot. Of course, it, it's an action game, so you probably uh, some of you at least uh, will have to shoot several times. Mm -hmm. But um, if normally you shoot under the attributes of nerves because you need training and defensively, etc. But if someone, if you are at close combat in a John Wick type of situation and you're using a gun, you're shooting while you barely in, in a fist fight with your gun, you use shoot under muscle because it's important that you uh, you are giving punches and getting punches, etc. Or when you are uh, just um, some were quiet and you are using, for example, a sniper rifle, something like that, you will shoot on focus because it's a different kind of situation. It's not that an adrenaline type of situation. It's a situation where you need to breathe, to relax, etc. You can rely uh, on focus. Or maybe if you are in a more uh, like a spy uh, movie type of uh, situation and you, you know, the, the classic scene when you have your newspaper and you... <laughs> Shoot someone uh, from behind the, the newspaper. You can shoot in crime because your goal is not um, your main goal is not to uh, hit the target, but to hit the target without anyone notice, mm -hmm. and so on. That that's yeah. just uh, a, a simple example that when you understand when these five attributes comes into play, it's very easy for both players and. Um, you know, narrators alike to to mix and match. Also because we have in the game two different type of roles. You have an action role and a reaction role. Basically the action role is when the player wants to do something. And so the player decides what, uh, what's the skill and what's the attribute. And it will be in the player's best interest to uh, roll and choose skill and attributes in which uh, they are uh, strong, <laughs> you know, uh, mm -hmm. while um, during a reaction role, it's the, the the director, which is the narrator's name for this game, which is it's the director who asks uh, the players to roll the dice in a in a skill and in an attribute. So they will uh, need to ask something accordingly to the situation and always try to be uh, creative uh, to catch the hero uh, of their main. Strong point, you know. Mm -hmm. so now, doing it like that, everyone was was pretty cool with that yeah. concept. I'd like to I like to put I like to put the the attribute skill relationship to the t to the test, and ju just the yeah. just the um, builds just the approach when it comes to build when it comes to building certain styles. Um, so before before I get into this, have you ever seen Equilibrium? Oh, of course! I love. We love everything. Yeah, so it's one of the main, <laughs> main movie at the base of what we are doing in Outer Gun. Mm -hmm. So, if somebody, if somebody, um, if somebody approached as a player and said that they wanted to build a build a character who was utilizing that that style of gu that style of gun kata, um. How would you how would you have them approach it, and and in particular, how would you have them approach the skill system? So, uh, for what concerns skill system, is pretty clear in my opinion. He's a gunfighter. With, I don't know if there will be a role with this name, but this name will, will certainly be in the game uh, because we have the fighter. Is one of the basic roles, of course. It, mm -hmm. It's a role that uh, fight with this fist or martial arts or whatever in a world full of guns. But you have the gunfighter as well, who has some sort of martial preparation, but with guns or rifles or whatever. Uh, so you will probably have uh, the, some useful skill set. You will probably be 
uh, hero of focus and nerves. Uh, just just looking at Christian Bale, of course, in mm-hmm. Equilibrium. If I mm-hmm. if I need to recreate the hero, the role it will depend. Probably is an agent because it works for an agency. The agent is a role of, of nerves, mm-hmm. and it will be some kind of. Uh, of trope that gives the second attribute the, the, the trope, just for you to know, mm-hmm. uh, that gives him focus. Um, and then you have, apart from the, the skill set, which is pretty simple, you will have shoot probably, or leadership, and you will probably have some, some fight skill, and so on. Uh, you have, apart from the skill and attribute, a list of feats, which are something special you can do. You will have both, um, I don't know, uh, passive and active feats. The passive feats are basically times when a um, situation where you can uh, re-roll, uh, free re-roll uh, your, your, your dice, meaning you can re-roll your dice without the fear of losing um, a success, which is very powerful. For example, you will have a feat probably that will be called, I don't know, Gunfighter. Mm-hmm. Uh, that will grant you the, the ability to re-roll all the uh, roll during in, when you fight someone using uh, some firearms. So you will be very, very strong when you uh, fight with some, with, um, using firearms. And you will probably have some active feats that um, grants you some special kind of uh, ability using your adrenaline, which is a, a resource you have and you can gain by rolling. Uh, inside the game, so I don't know. Maybe let's say I, I don't know if it exists. Maybe Gun Kata will be a, an active uh, type of feat, and when you use adrenaline, you may I don't know shoot automatically someone in a in a dark room because you know the exact position. Yeah. Okay, and you have it. Your hero, uh, your equilibrium type of sort of hero, mm-hmm. something like that. so you can yeah. balance. Uh, skill and attributes, passive feats, and active feats to always have uh, what you need to recreate that type of character, that type of scene you saw in a movie. That's the idea. Yeah, and I, I can, I can certainly get that. Um, I may, I mainly wanted to put that in to kind of see, to kind of see how far the concept can be stretched, because. Once this gets out in the wild, people are gonna come up with some with some cra- with some crazy ideas inevitably. And truth be told, I think this game kind of encourages it. <laughs> oh yes, yes, it will. Surely it yeah. will. <laughs> so one of the, one of the other things I wanted I wanted to get into because this is something that is something that a lot of games try, try and do, and and results are have been mixed with it. And that is the chase mechanic that you guys have, which yes. did give me a bit of a did give me a bit of a chuckle when you titled it "Need for Speed" in the <laughs> book, um, in part because I can use that as a double reference. I can use that as yeah. <laughs> like, obviously, obviously Top Gun, but also yes. well, the racing series of the same name because yes, that that that, that was the idea behind the quote. Yeah, uh, but. Building it, but building chases around just around primarily need and speed and speed. Um, was it was it relatively easy to come to come to that conclusion, or were or were there or were there a few um, att- attempts beforehand that didn't quite work out before you got it to that point? It it was not easy, as you said. Many many systems try to catch the essence of a. Uh, of an action movie chase situation, which is very peculiar. And we spend a lot of time talking among ourselves uh, just to come up with a solution. And then uh, I need to say the name really helped us when we thought about, okay, need for speed. Okay, we need need and speed. They have two different things. What do they do? It just drive us towards the solution. Mm-hmm. But the, the really things that change the perspective for us, it's what is the speed? What's your speed? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not something absolute, but it's something relative to your opponent. Yeah. And that is what changed us, uh, everything for us. Because uh, what we struggle with in a chase, of course, let, let's uh, let's speak the, the most basic of chases, a group of heroes in a car, 
um, chasing someone in, in yeah. a car. Okay, the most basic kind of stuff. Uh, you have, of course, the, the driver, which is a hero who will drive, and it's pretty uh, clear what he has to do during the chase. He, he needs to drive. Uh, and so he will need to do a lot of role involving uh, his drive skill under different attributes. I don't know, but what are the others doing and how can they manage to help him without overcomplicating everything? And that's where the concept of our speed comes to life. The speed is how fast you are, that how faster you are than your opponent. So mm -hmm. everything you can do to accelerate, to, to increase your speed or to um, you know, diminish the speed of your opponent will increase your speed value. Or if you find some, um, I don't know what to call it, some, some shorter route, <laughs> Uh, it will, of course, increase your speed value and so on. So when we uh, unlock this, it becomes very clear that every hero during a chase can be of help. So uh, the driver will drive, maybe someone will shoot at the, at the opponent, someone will just point, oh no, take the turn to the left, you see there's something coming, everybody has something uh, that needs to be done in order to uh, get closer or 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 not to the to the opponent, mm -hmm. and and we use of course the we we combine this with the concept of action and reaction roles, which is the very basic core of the system. So you have um, uh, an action turn when every hero can uh, do something to increase the speed, but if the hero fails, they will decrease the speed. So Whatever they are doing is not working. Uh, and then they have a reaction role when the opponent will do something. Will, uh, I don't know, shoot at them. Will make some crates full of them. Or, or the uh, director themselves can make something at them. We call the, the special action during a chase as well. We do not uh, talk about this in the quick start, of course, mm -hmm. for... <laughs> For pages issues, <laughs> we, have, we run out of pages at mm -hmm. certain points. But um, the director as well has the power to make something happen. You know, a uh, chariot comes through the street just before you, or uh, a group of ships. It's just you need to find a creative solution. So that um, can help the scene to become really, really memorable, you know. Uh, because you have all the 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 the, the, the randomness of <laughs> of a movie change because a lot of things happen so fast and that's how we reach our need for speed system for ending chases so mm -hmm. we hope it will, it will be as good as we imagine it to do yeah now with that, in, with that in mind, I would like to dive a little bit into the new into into the um, world of killers um, setting. Because um, some games I've seen build build themselves around their setting. Some games build themselves around their mechanics. I'm curious if there was a if there was a chicken and egg situation going on with World of Killers. Did the idea of World of Killers come first, and then the rules for Outgun come along, or was it vice versa? Uh, it, it's it's <laughs> it's complex. Uh, well, Outgun was born around uh, you know the system because around the focus. The focus is about action movie. But the reason uh, why we 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 are rediscovering you know action movies is probably a lot due to the late. Uh, John Wick franchise, mm -hmm. which was a huge inspiration for us and a, a huge way to rediscover all the tropes of action movie that makes action movies so great. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, basically, World of Killers is our homage to the John Wick saga, uh, and not, not just John Wick saga, but every uh, single uh, movie and series which has this rich underworld of societies and the hitmans and it's a fun way for us because we, we are in love with the job with lore so it's a fun way for us to have an original role 
but inside your everyday world. You know, yeah. so you have your your standard uh, world, uh, but you have the all the originality of the of the the lore inside hidden into hotels and shady neighbors and uh, some strange guys always well dressed that will go around wielding some katanas i don't know mm-hmm. but whatever it is it will contain an original settings and i think a lot of um suggestions to make your own to shape your own under original underground world when you can uh play a, a lot of if, if you thought a lot of um action franchises has this idea of the secret society mm-hmm. but and mission impossible for example in, in its own way or jay's bond it's an mi6 against the spectrum you know secret societies that no one knows about and do these um epic battles uh inside the everyday world inside yeah. the normal world where you have you are walking down the street and you turn and you saw this uh over qualified agents just <laughs> doing some epic fights using guns and martial arts or whatever so mm. that's what that was the idea because we, we find it very very fascinating this world inside the world yeah and i remember i remember one of the things that drew me in when it came to john wick was this as you mentioned the whole secret society thing but also mm-hmm. The fact that there were that there were certain certain laws, certain co- certain codes, certain yes. gentlemen's yes. agreements that ha- that had to be um, that ha- that had to be abided by, or there would be consequences. Um, yes. The bit, of course, of course, the big one being no, being no business in the in the Continental Hotel. <laughs> yes. Yes. But one of the other ones. Is the idea of it of that world having its own currency, that be that being the go- stuff like the gold coins or the markers? Um, and I'm cur- I'm curious if if not if not in a one to one thing, but if there's if you if there's something similar when it comes to World of Killers, where there's where you have people in those organizations that have certain um, rules that they have to abide by. Uh, yes, of course, there will be codes, you know, rule because you know, uh, just a, a lot of uh, franchise have these kind of things. Uh, but we are we are talking about every kind of civil society has its own code mm-hmm. because it, it's very fun to play. That, that's the reason. <laughs> it's very fun to play a character that needs to abide to some rule, some. It, are clear some are crazy and you need to do okay but maybe i can do that easily but in doing that i can break the rules what happens if i break the rules and so on so i think so i don't know how much how many how many how, how precise they will be but there will be the concept of codes um, and, and so on in, in world of killers because we we think it, but it, it's what makes even you know, World of Darkness, so so great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the idea we we are very fond of World of Darkness. Yeah, the idea that the secret society has their own secret rules and you need to know them and you need to you you can use them you know, at your advantage or they can be used against you, etc. I think it's a very very cool twist from your playing action movie. Mm-hmm. Now. One of the bi- one of the big um, en- en- entries that's that's being added to the uh, ki- to the Kickstarter that you guys have just been expanding upon day day after day after day over the last few weeks has been um, action flicks. Yes. And now, as I, as I understand it, each en- each entry when it comes to action flicks is do is doing. That is doing the notion of doubling down on on a certain on a certain genre, and I'm, is it a case where each of them is each of them is going to have their own roles and tropes, or what what it what part what part on the mechanic end 
would um, individual action flicks expand upon? Uh, it, uh, it will differ uh, mm -hmm. from flicks to flicks, because yeah. each action flicks uh, meant to give the players uh, more tools to uh, have their session and their campaign uh, set in a, in a specific uh, subgenre of mm -hmm. the action. So oh. in some case, uh, you need a, you will need a new role mm -hmm. or new tropes. Uh, in other case, you just need some new fits, you know, because you can use your your playing role, and we will give you some guide to interpret that role inside uh, a different uh, setting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you will need new gear, new weapons, or new vehicle new rules for that. Sometimes you will need a bunch of new rules yeah. because there are several things that are strange and you need some added optional rules than your basic core rules. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you just need that. the example we, we made, uh, the primary example, an, an, an action flick called uh, Killing Aliens mm -hmm. uh, based on all these sci-fi horror movies like Alien, Predator and so on when a bunch of heroes go against a very big, mean, and almost unkillable alien. Uh, you you basically need a lot of rules to handle that type of special enemy, which will have its own rule. Then the enemy you will find its core rule. That because yeah. you probably already have all the tools to build your 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 marine mm -hmm. <laughs> to go against them, but you need something more specific uh, when it comes to 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 come up with a really great alien menace. Mm -hmm. um, there it's are really there really are a few great. action flicks that I would that I would like to delve it I would like to delve into as far <laughs> as what you guys what you guys have planned for them that have been unlocked at the time of this recording. Um, one of them is Rising Dragon because yeah. I'm I'm not going to say that I'm an expert when it comes to Wuxia, but I have been doing a lot of research within, within it, and the world of Wuxia fiction is very fascinating, and it's also one that allows for a lot of really crazy material. And yes, given yes. how a lot of emphasis is placed on, di on differing martial styles within a lot of Wuxia works, um, how do you plan on carrying that over into Outgunned? Basically, uh, the um, Rising Dragon will feature two, in this case, different area. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that I think, whatever I, 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 I'm telling you, of course, we still need to write them so it can change. <laughs> but we probably have uh, a new role specifically, or at least uh, a lot of character option. Uh, but basically, with that, a lot of feats for both uh, heroes and enemies. To give them uh, a wide um, variety of styles, what you can do, probably a lot of active traits to do some uh, particular moves that you need, some particular style uh, as a uh, to 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 be used. Uh, you can have some enemies that know martial arts or are uh, able to use some straight or some specific uh, martial weapons and so on. So it will have two different parts. So you can choose what to do. You can take these rising uh, dragon rules and just um, have your Wuxia, full, full Wuxia session. So we martial artists on both sides and a story about revenge and honor and so on. Uh, but you can also take uh, some um, singular things uh, small things and put it in your standard outgun session. So you may have amongst the heroes one hero who is a real martial artist, a master of an old and ancient martial arts, who will be uh, teaming up with some a cop, I don't know, or a, mm -hmm. or a sketchy, uh, sketchy driver to rob a casino, I don't know, but whatever the reason you will be. Or you have a bunch of um, playing. Uh, heroes will be go against uh, a villain who, has, who is a master of some uh, ancient martial arts with uh, a lot of goons, which are warriors as well, 
or ninjas, I don't know. So you can have all the tools you need to craft your uh, own settings. That's that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Now, the the other one, one of the others that I wanted to ask on because there's a lot of ways that this that this can go about. This is mm -hmm. basically giving players and GMs a blank check. Is a kind of magic because don't think I did don't think I didn't notice you trying to slip in a queen reference. <laughs> no, no. Come on. But mad. But when it comes, it, it was without. So it, it yeah, was in the air. <laughs> but the point is, there's a lot there. Magic. There's a lot. There is literally infinite things that can be done potentially with it, and obviously yes. any story that has that has magic, whether it be your your Harry Potter's, your your Dresden Files, or or even your Lord of the Rings is, um, has to it has to establish its set of rules when it comes to what magic is. Yes, and I'm curious. I'm curious if I'm curious if that's if that's something that you guys are going to be taking into account with a kind of magic. Uh, uh, yes, of course. A kind of magic will uh, dwell into particularly uh, sorcerer's apprentice type of magic, so urban fantasy setting. Mm -hmm. Dresden Five, for example, is a very good uh, idea. Uh, and also it will have uh, rules for magic, how to handle magic, perform magic, what magic does, how magic works. And it will also have the rules for magic uh, enemies and mystic enemies. So, as I was saying before, you can go full Dresden File, or you can go full... Um, a uh, big tribal in Little China, where oh, just your enemy is no magic, and you are just some random hero who needs to save the day once more. Yeah. Uh, but we will be will not be Lord of the Rings uh, kind of setting, but it will for sure be a new urban fantasy kind of set of setting. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. That of course, these action flicks are just. Um, tools uh, and suggestions on how to uh, thwart your outgun session into what you want. We hope that, but mm -hmm. as we said before, maybe some of them will be particularly uh, enjoyed by the community, so they, they may transform into a full expansion book uh, somewhere in the future. Yeah. It's a possibility. If, if everyone will love magic and win ask for a deeper or more complex, more interesting magic system, it's, of course, something we are open uh, to do in the future. We'll see. Mm -hmm. oh. Now, one, one of the other ones in, the, in, to, in a lighter affair um, that I wanted to ask on is, clo is Cloak and mm -hmm. Dagger. I do appreciate yes. the, the, the references that you, that you guys put in when it came to when it came to the announcement that it was unlo that it was unlocked and just the just the following up on a on a um, household reference, yes. <laughs> but oh, with of all of all the action flicks, Cloak and Dagger is the one that se that would seem the most natural to have some sort of system regarding um, regarding du regarding duels. I'm curious if that's something you guys have considered. Well, of course, duels are some. We, we came from Auzo, of course, so we love the this, this genre. <laughs> the Clock and Decker genre and the Renaissance settings mm -hmm. is just something that we really, really, really love. Uh, so, yes, it would probably have several, several mechanics uh, that would be uh, an evolution from what we saw in and we used uh, in Auzo as well to handle. Uh, sword fights and uh, duels, one one uh, classic, uh, you know, epic duels during a storm uh, and so on. Because that, that that's what we love, so we probably go in there. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier the the whole issue the whole issue of magic being a blank check. Um, yes, the same. The same thing can apply with su with um, supers, since one of the other ones that was unlocked is great powers. Yes. Um, yes. So when we, we had, yes, we, it was a very very 
fan asks we the fan asked a lot about these particular flips mm-hmm. and so we are pretty happy um, Great Powers is an action flick about street what we call street level, street level superheroes mm-hmm. so uh, nothing major you have your uh, Daredevil style uh, you know your Defender style kind of heroes heroes that still needs to fight against a bunch of armed goons. That, that's the idea yeah. of the street level heroes. They are stronger, but they still need to fight against them. Yeah. Uh, they are not the one, one of, or they are not Superman and so on. Yeah, the one of the uh, one of the entries that you used as an example, or not, not an example, but the inspired on the inspired by list was X Men. And yes, the series. Well, X ex- Men. Ex- well, X Men X Men borders on street level. It's one of those cases where it's where it really straddles the line, depending on what um, X Men story you're dealing with. We we, we use as reference the the animated series of mm-hmm. X Men. Well, the that, <laughs> that's that makes it even more tricky because yeah, on one hand, got, <laughs> on one hand, that series and, and, had you know the the fights against Magneto, but then you have Stuff like the yes, whole, like yes, the whole yes, Dark yes, Phoenix yes, arc. You have everything, of course. When you're talking about X Men, you have everything. Yep. But the 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 sense is used the the first time you know the first movie uh, kind of uh, superheroes without uh, going into uh, very very omni power. Full beings that the X Men uh, mythology is full, <laughs> of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but we will start from there. Uh, yeah. As I say, the, the the rules for us will be: you have super some kind of superpower, but you still need to fight your way, uh, even against a, a prepared, you know, uh, plain human. <laughs> Who is very prepared? Uh, he, he will put up a fight, uh, so that's kind. But as I was saying, this is a first step mm-hmm. towards a very specific genre. Let's see what uh, it, where it will bring us, and maybe in the future we can uh, see that this system can develop into more complex type of superhero <laughs> and even more powerful type of superhero. Mm-hmm. And I, w- I will, cer- I will certainly be looking forward to to it. Um, Thank you. Now, with with that in mind, I I know that I know that there's um, there's 55 hours to go at the time of this recording, and I do want to congratulate yes. you on get on managing to get 230.5 thousand euros at this time when you were only hey, asking it, for it, 10 thousand. Yes, it's a really unbelievable for us. Oh. Uh, what, but <laughs> um, what are you guys shooting for as far as a release window for the, at the very least, the PDF of the core book? Uh, so uh, we plan on having everything, sh- the, the physical version of everything shipped by next March. Uh, we believe, we hope to release the core book PDF uh, soon after the summer. Summer, maybe in September, if everything goes according to plan, uh, and the other soon after. That's the idea. So having the core book in three months from now, I don't know what day it is today, but um, well, today is the today yeah. is May twenty third. Ah, it's, it's still May. I'm, my mind is June for some reason. Well, uh, we're a so... few days off from that. Okay, okay. So, yes, we're talking about three, four months uh, to release the PDF of the core book of Outgant. Mm-hmm. All right, and I will, I will certainly be looking forward to seeing it. Oh, Thank you. And I, I focused on that one, per, I focused on that specifically because oh, I'd, imag- I'd imagine Action Flix is going, to ta- is going to take a bit more time. Yeah, of course, as you can imagine, being that stretch goals while uh, the core book and uh, World of Killers, the expansion, uh, are more more advanced. Uh, the action flick uh, are less advanced book of the three, so it will be probably 
the last one to came out, but we hope that everything will be uh, sent at least to the market uh, mm. before the end of the year. Yeah. That idea. Uh, and we'll see if we <laughs> will be good enough and fast enough. Yeah. Now, with... And I will, like I said, I will be looking forward to, to seeing that, and I do wish the best of luck when it comes to deal, dealing with the 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 usual the usual issues that can happen with printing anything. Oh. Yes, of course, of course, <laughs> yes, as you said. So it's but, it's easier yeah. to make promises for what concerns the digital version, of course, mm -hmm. because you have more control when you uh, turn to the physical side of things and uh, factory and so on anything could happen but still we have a, a good track record uh, so we hope that the overall global situation that it's it's very surprising in the last few years we do not have more surprises in store for us that will somehow delay the the shipping but we are fairly um calm about it so mm -hmm. let's hope yeah and as me as mentioned i as mentioned i will be looking forward to seeing how the how this de how this develops but with that with that said i do want to sincerely thank you once again for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way to my temple and enjoy the madness at play here thank you yep. and Anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for having me and having us uh, to, to this wonderful place mm -hmm. and space. So, yes, I'm pretty sure that in the future we will have time to chat again. Mm. Uh, maybe about a gun or maybe about one of our next project. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, and of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty everybody! <laughs>